Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Calculating the Mean, the Median, and the Mode of a Data Set. This is part one. So before we actually calculate mean, median, mode, let's talk a little bit about why we care about doing this. Let's look at the big picture. In general, you're collecting data. We can give some examples of that. Maybe the grades in a classroom, bunch of numbers, right? Maybe the height of plants in your garden. Okay, we measure a bunch of numbers, that's a bunch of data. We could go on and on. The age of people when they have their first baby, that's a bunch of numbers, right? And we want to analyze that data. We wanna understand that data without reading every single number. Maybe I have a thousand numbers. Nobody can read a thousand numbers, not gonna happen. So we want to boil down the set of data to make it understandable. And the two th ways that we do that is in the first way, we want to figure out kind of what is a center value? What is a good uh, middle value for that data set? If I'm talking about the grades in a classroom, then we might want to average the grades and figure out kind of what the average student did in that classroom, right? If I'm talking about the height of corn in a field, maybe I want to figure out what the middle of that data set is so I have an idea of what the average uh, uh, you know, plant is actually doing. So these ways of finding the kind of middle value of the data set, we call it finding a measure of the center of the data set. And there's three ways to do it. We're gonna talk about here. One is the mean, the next one is called the median, and the next one is called the mode. So what we're gonna do is calculate these for the first problem, I'll show you how to do it. And then after the first problem, I'm gonna to explain to you why we actually have different ways of doing it and when you might need to use different ways, okay? But put that on the back burner for a second and keep Stay with me for a second because I'm trying to get the big picture to you. You have a bunch of data. You want to find the measure of the center of the data, right? So that's one very important thing. In future lessons, we're also going to be concerned with what we call the spread of the data. We can use fancy words in statistics. You might call it the dispersion or, you know, there's other words for it. But the spread of the data is really accurate. You want to know where the center of the data is, but you also want to know how spread out it is. So if you're thinking about, for instance, students in a class taking a test, you wanna know the average value, but you also wanna know how spread out the grades were about the average value, right? So for instance, if the average was an 80, right? Did most of the students get very close to 80, like 79, 78, 81, 82? Or did we have lots of spreading around around the 80, where we had lots of 60s and 50s and lots of 100s, okay? So the center value of the data is important and also how spread out the data is important. So in this lesson, we're conquering the center of the data. How do we measure the center? In future lessons, we, we figure out how to measure the spread of the data. So let's take a look at our first problem, number of students, right? So this sort of thing is basically the number of students in different classrooms, right? So classroom number one is eight students, another class has seven students, another class has 10 students, another class has seven students, seven students, and finally, one, two, three, four, five, so the sixth class has nine students. How do we look at these numbers and try to figure out what a good middle value is for it? Well, there are different flavors of doing it. Let's talk about the mean first. What we're going to do is calculate the mean. Now, I know that you all understand at least an idea of what the mean is because it's exactly the same thing as the average. So when we talk about averaging grades in a class or averaging the cost of whatever, jelly beans that you're purchasing, then that is exactly the same thing as the mean. To find the mean, all you do is you add all of the numbers together and then you divide by how many you have. So in this case, it's eight plus seven plus 10 plus seven plus seven plus nine. So we write down uh, eight plus seven plus 10 plus seven plus seven plus nine. Notice we have one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. Now, if we add all this up, either in a calculator or by hand, you're going to get the number 48. Now that number doesn't tell us very much. All it tells us is that is the addition of all of these things. But what we do is we take the addition of these things, 48, and then we divide it by how many data points we have. One, two, three, four, five, six data points. So what you're doing, you see, is you're adding up the values so you are you are calculating using all of the values in your data set, but what you're doing by dividing by six is you're like spreading out all of the numbers evenly as if it were really six uh, uh, six data points and trying to figure out over six data points, what would the average be in each one of those points? So that's kind of a long-winded way of saying when you add them all up and divide, you're kind of spreading it out over six uh, positions to see what the average number of each position would be. That's a long-winded way of saying that when we add them up and we divide, we kind of spread all of the data out among six places to figure out what the average is. So 48 divided by six is eight. So when you look at this 
and you say that the mean is eight. What you have basically figured out is on average, you see you have some numbers bigger than eight, like nine and 10 are bigger than eight. And then one number is actually equal to eight here. And then some numbers are actually less than eight. The sevens are less than eight. So when you have a mean, it's trying to give you a middle of the road value that represents the middle of the data set. Some numbers in the data are gonna be higher. Some numbers of the data are gonna be lower. But on average, the middle value there is eight, right? In this case, all right? So before we go any further, let's look at our original data set and let's create what we call a line plot. So we have, what we're gonna do is put little marks on here to represent the data. We have one classroom that has eight students. We'll put a little X there. One classroom with seven students. One classroom with 10 students. We have two more classes with seven more students. So we have two more classes here at seven. And then we have one at nine. So you see, you can visually see that most of the classrooms actually have seven students. And then some classrooms have, you know, more students, but it looks like in general, if you just look at this data, most of the classrooms have somewhere around this number of students because the most has seven. And then if you had to pick a middle value, it would not be way over here because you have so many data points pulling it down. So you can think of when you calculate the mean, all the data points are kind of pulling left and pulling right. And wherever the center lies is where that tug of war ends. So you have three points spread out pulling it this way, but you have three points concentrated at seven pulling it this way. It's gonna pull the average down somewhere around here. And we actually calculated the mean was actually eight. So we can put that on our uh, on our chart here and we can just put a little arrow, arrow here and say that this is the mean. It's a middle of the road value. It's a middle of the road value, right? And it's just one way of describing the center of this data set. So if I tell you that I took data from six classrooms and recorded the number of students in each classroom and uh, I could give you the raw data and that would be useful. Or I could say, hey, I recorded this data, but I already took the mean. And actually it turns out that the average number or the mean uh, number of students in a classroom is eight. And then you wouldn't even need to know the raw data. If I told you the mean was eight, then you would say, okay, on average, there's about eight, which means some student, some classrooms will have a little bit less than eight and some classrooms will have a little bit more than eight. But on average, if I randomly pick a classroom, it should be somewhere around eight. Now, obviously there's only one data point actually at eight. So it doesn't mean that you're uh, you, that you're gonna get eight all the time if you do a random survey. It just means that some of the data is above and some of the data is below. It's trying to find a center value. The center value cannot be here because there's too many data points pulling it this way. And the center value cannot be right here because there's all these data points pulling it. And this tug of war ends right here with the mean of eight. All right, now as promised, we have another way of measuring the center of this thing. It's called the median. All right. And again, I'm going to talk to you why we have these different, different methods here in a second. But for now, let's just talk about how to find the median. The median is the center value of the data set when you arrange the numbers in order from least to greatest. So we're not adding anything up and dividing or anything. We are literally just arranging them from smallest to biggest and just literally looking for the center value in our data set. So let's do that. We have the numbers right here, but we want to arrange them from least to greatest. So what we have is a seven right here, and we have another seven, and we have another seven right here. That's the three sevens. Then we have an eight, a nine, and a 10. So we have an eight, and then a nine, and then a 10. And then I'm literally gonna say, we arrange it from least to greatest, and I want you to pick the value in the middle. All right, and you say, well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, this one's really not in the middle because if it were in the middle, there's two, two numbers here and three numbers up above. And it can't be the number eight because because if it's number eight, there's two numbers up above and three below. So in this case, when there's an even number of data points, you really don't have a center value. See, if there's an odd number of data points, like five data points, then I have two on the top and two, two on the bottom and two on the top, and I have one in the middle, and I can pick a center value. If there's an odd number of data points, you just pick the center value. But if there's an even number of data points, there really is not a really good center value. So what you do instead is you say, all right, I have, I, I arrange it into two like little groupings here. And I say, let me see if I can do this like this. I say, these are the center two, I guess is the better way to look at it. These are the center two values. 
right? And there's, what do I do? There's a seven and an eight, but there's two of the numbers in the center. So what I do is I take the average of the center two, and that's gonna be my median. So what you do is you say seven plus eight, and seven plus eight is what, 15, right? You take that and then you say 15, and you divide that by two, and you get 7.5. So what you figured out here is the median is 7.5. Now notice 7.5 is not in my data set at all. Usually if there's an odd number of data points, you just pick the middle value, but here there is no middle value. So if you ever get in a situation where there is no middle value, just find the middle two values and average them. That's all we did. Middle two values, seven plus eight, 15, 15 divided by two, because there's two points here, 7.5 for the median. Now if this is seven and this is eight, then right here, is 7.5, so I guess I'll put it right here, 7.5, and we'll write this as the median. All right, so you notice here that we already have something interesting. We have, we want to measure the center of the data set, and we calculated the mean, and we got a number of eight. And we calculated the median, which is 7.5, so they're already different. I told you there would be different ways of finding the center. And I'm gonna to explain to you after this problem why what you should be thinking about, but right now let's just get through the problem. So the mean, add all the numbers up, divide uh, by the number of data points. For the median, arrange them least to greatest, pick the middle value, but if you don't have a middle value, grab the middle two values and average them, all right? Let's move on to the mode. Mode is the easiest of all, actually. Because for the mode, all you do is you look through your data, and you pick the number that occurs most often, right? It's not a calculation. You don't add anything, right? You just look through the numbers and you figure out which one happens more often. I have a seven, a seven, a seven. So there's three sevens, only one eight, only one nine, and only one 10. So because I have three sevens, the mode is equal to seven, all right? So I go here, I put a little arrow here, and this is the mode. Mode is equal to seven. So you see, the mean was an eight, the median was a 7.5, the mode was a seven. So there's three different ways of finding the center, kind of the center of the data set, and they're all different numbers. So why do we, what do we, which one do we believe, right? Well, the answer is it's, it's not so much which one is correct, it's which one is best to use in your situation. Okay, and I'll explain that in just a minute. Before I do that, I wanna let you know, what if you're, for looking at the mode, what if uh, we only had one six, a one seven, one eight, one nine, one ten. What if we didn't have any any uh, duplicates of seven? If you have just one number of of everything and there's no duplicates, there's nothing that occurs most often. Then you actually have no mode, right? You have no mode. And in this case, we have a mode of seven, but you can have no mode. You can also have more than one mode. Like what if I had? What if the data set was seven seven eight eight nine ten? So there was two sevens two eights, and then a nine and a 10. Well, then you actually have two modes because the seven and the eight are tied for occurring most frequently, all right? So you can have a mode, you can have multiple modes, or you can actually have no mode at all. And so I just wanted to, uh, to let you know that. All right, let's talk for a minute before we calculate the next, uh, the next problem. What, how we interpret these, uh, these things here. All right, the bottom line is we use the mean most often. You use the mean when your data is what we call well-behaved. And when I'm talking about well-behaved, I mean that there's no outliers. Let's take an example, because uh, an example always solidifies it in our mind, okay? Let's say you're in a neighborhood and you're trying to figure out uh, the price of the homes in the neighborhood, right? And so uh, you might want to figure out the average home price, all right? Now you have uh, 10 houses that are all somewhere around $95,000, let's say. All right, and uh, maybe 92,000, 93,000, 101,000, that kind of thing, all right? And then you have one house, only one, in the very back, he's super rich. He's got a $23 million house, only one house though, in the back. That house is called an outlier because yes, he lives there, but it's so random and rare that it's not really representative of most of the houses in the neighborhood, but you see what's gonna happen. If you try to find the average home price, you're going to add up all of the prices of the houses, including the, whatever I told you, $2 million house or $5 million house or 20 million, whatever it is, you're gonna add it in and you're gonna get a huge number and divide by the number of houses and it's going to pull your mean very far towards the outlier. So then you, I might say, uh, well, what is the average home price in the neighborhood? And you might say, the average home price is a million dollars, 
but it's not really a million. It is a million dollars mathematically, but it's only because of one house that pulled it so far away from most of the houses, which are actually around $95,000, right? So yes, you can calculate it, but it doesn't have any value if the reason that your mean is so high is because an outlier mathematically pulled it high. So you can calculate a mean, but we don't like to when there's an outlier because it skews the, the mean too much, all right? Now, what do we do instead? we do something called the median. Let's pretend we were finding home houses prices with using the median. What you would have is you would arrange the prices of the houses from largest, from smallest to largest, and down at the low end, it would be like 89,000, 91,000, 92,000, 93,000, maybe 100,000, 104,000, and then you would have the very last number. The largest one would be $10 million. But you see, for the median, you don't calculate anything. You just arrange it and you select the one in the middle. So you see, when you take the median, if there's an outlier, the outlier is not folded into the value of the median too much. Because the outlier is gonna be at the very end and you're only looking at the center data. So you would probably pick something around 100,000 if you calculated the median. So that's crucial for you to know. We like to use the median if we think there's outliers in the data, right? And we like to use the mean if there is no outliers in the data. Uh, because all the data is more clustered together. So it basically boils down to, is there an outlier or is there not an outlier, all right? And when would we use the mode? The mode is not used as much, but we can use the mode when our data is non-numerical, when it's not numbers. So, you know, these are numbers, the examples I'm giving you here, but I can do, uh, what if I said uh, uh, type of eye color or color of eyes of students? And the, instead of numbers, the, uh, the answers would be blue, blue, brown, 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 blue, blue, brown, brown, blue, blue, brown. Okay, how do you average blue and brown? You can't. How do you take the median of blue and brown? Well, you can kind of arrange them, but least to greatest, how do you do that with colors? You can't. But with the mode, what you're selecting is what occurs most often. So maybe brown, 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 brown occurred more often, boom, that's the mode. So when your data is not numerical, when it's like words or something like that, surveys like that, what's your favorite ice cream? Pizza, 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 pizza. You know, hamburger, hamburger, pizza, 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 pizza. Okay, pizza occurred more often, that's my mode. And that's what I'm gonna call the center of the data set. So let's recap, and then we have two more problems here. We have the idea of trying to figure out the center of this data set, but there are different ways to do it. One way is just to look at what number occurs most often. There are three sevens, so we call it the mode, right? We can have situations where there's no mode at all and when there's multiple modes. Then we have a situation called the median, where we just arrange the numbers least to greatest, and then we just pick the number in the middle. In this case, we had two numbers in the middle, so we average them. And so that is better if we have outliers, all right? And then we have the mean, which is used most often of all. The mean is when you mathematically average everything by adding it together and dividing by the number uh, of data points that you have. In this case, the number eight is the mean. And notice, notice that you might consider the 10 uh, in the nine maybe, or even some of these points would be more of an outlier. Like maybe you can kind of see that these points over here are kind of pulling the mean to the right where the median stayed closer to the bulk of the data. I mean, you have three points at seven, and then these three, you could sort of consider almost like outliers, not really. An outlier is usually really far away. But you could sort of think of these as outliers, in which case the median stays closer to the bulk of the data, and the mean is pulled to the right. And in the case of the extreme case with the $10 million house, the mean is pulled so far to the right that it basically doesn't help us, and we don't use it in that case. So, after all that talking, let's move on to problem number two. Here is some test scores uh, from students in a class. And this is what we all are all familiar with growing up. Let's find the mean, the median, and the mode. But before we do that, let's create a little line plot. Here we have one student that got an 86, another student that got an 84, another student that got a 91, another student that got a 79 way over here, and then another student that got an 84. Now, if I asked you, these are the data here in, in a graphical form, where would you pick the center of this data? Well, you wouldn't pick over here. That's not the center. There's too much data over there. You wouldn't pick over here. There's too many points over there. The center has got to be somewhere right around here. And maybe it's pulled a little bit closer to the two points that we have right here because calculating the mean is like a tug of war average. The points on the left are pulling it that way and the other ones are pulling it that way and it ends up in the middle somewhere. So I think it's going to be somewhere close to these. Let's see what it turns out to be for the mean. What we do is we add these up. So it's 86 
plus 84, plus 91, plus 79, plus 84. Right? When we add all those together, we actually get 424. You can run that through a calculator or you can do column addition if you want. And then if we take 424 and we divide it by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there's only five data points here, we divide by 5, we get 84.8. So the mean is 84.8. So let's see where this is. If this is 84 and this is 85, 84.8 if I'm looking at this right, yeah, 84.8 is going to be pretty close to 85, but not quite. So it's going to be probably right there. This is the mean. And it's 84.8. And that's kind of what we said ahead of time. We said that the mean is going to be somewhere in the center, probably pulled a little bit closer to these two points, because it's kind of tugging it that way. So that's the mathematical average of the mean of all of those data points. Now let's take a look at the median. For the median, we have to arrange the numbers from smallest to biggest. So let's go ahead and do that first. We have a 79. And then what comes next? We have an 84, and then we have another 84, right? Yep, 84. And another 84. That's uh, all of those. And then we have 86, 91. 86, 91. Let me just double check. 79, 84, 84, 86, 91. Okay. So then we say, well, we have one, two, three, four, five points. This one is the one in the middle. This one is the median. It's just literally the one in the middle. The only reason we had to average here is because in the middle there was two points. And so we had to average them. But usually if there's an odd number of points, you just pick that guy. And that's exactly 84. So we'll kind of come over here to 84, put a little arrow right here. And kind of like do something like this. And we'll call this the median. Right? That's the median. All right, 84 is the median. You see they're close together. Uh, and why are they close together, by the way? Because the mean and the median will be close together if the data is well behaved. But what if there was an outlier? Let's think for a minute. What if there was an outlier? These are grades in the class. All of them got, well, I guess they had a C here, but most of them are A's and B's. Let's say we had an outlier with someone with a zero, or let's take a, a, a non-zero number, like a number one. They got a one. They showed up, and, and I don't even know how you can get a one, but they got a one on the test. So on the chart, all these grades will be here, and this is a 79 way this way, is a single grade at a grade of one. Then in that case, the mean would be adding up all of these numbers plus just one more, and then you would be dividing by six instead of five, and I promise you, if you do that calculation, the mean will be way lower than 84. It'll drag it way, way, way down. But the median will have a one here, uh, in the in, in the 79, do, 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 and you'd find the middle, in that case, you'd have the middle two values. Actually, if you look at it, if you had a one here, uh, then you'd have two points here, and you'd have two points here, and you'd have two 84s in the middle, and when you average two numbers that are the same, you're still going to get an 84. The median in that case would still be 84, but the mean would be really skewed, but only because of one student. Maybe he just left during the class. Maybe he just didn't even show up except for the last five minutes. I mean, yes, it is part of the data set, but the problem is it's so non-representative of everybody else that it's just not of much value to consider extreme outliers like that. So, but in any case, in that case, the mean and the median would be skewed. The mean in that case would be pulled way far away from the median, but because this data is fairly well behaved, then the mean and the median are very similar. Now let's do the final one here, the mode. All right, well, we have two 84s, so that occurs more often than everybody else, so the mean is, I'm sorry, the, the mode is 84. So I will also put a little, another little arrow right here and call it the mode. So you see in this case, the median and the mode both turned out to be the exact same number, which is 84, and the mean turned out to be very close by, 84.8. And this is a very good, uh, a very good check that your data set is well behaved without many out, without outliers. If the mean and the median and the mode are all very close together, then you have a good data set without outliers. These numbers will become different from each other drastically if you have outliers in either direction. All right, let's take a look at our last problem. Here we have the number of players on a basketball team. So this team has 23 players, this team has 32 players, and so on. Let's go ahead and graph this. So one team has 23 players, another team has 32 players, Another team has 22 players, another team has 22 players, and then another team actually has 22 players, and then somebody else has 29. So let me just double check. That looks right to me. Now, before we do anything, 
Let's think about it for a second. You can just tell by looking at the data that most teams have somewhere around 22 and 23 players. But there are a couple of, I don't even want to call them outliers, but they look a little bit like outliers. You have one team with 29, and then this one's way over there at 32. So I don't have enough data to really know for sure if these are outliers, but at first glance, it looks like they kind of are. Because this is like almost, this is 10 people less than what would be here. So this, to me, looks like a situation where the, um, where the most of the data is here. And because I have these outliers, I'm probably gonna trust a median calculation more than a mean. The mean calculation is gonna be pulled to the right and we're not gonna trust it as much. Now, those are my predictions and I honestly haven't thought about this too much. So let's see, let's see how correct I am. So here is the mean. What do we do? We add up the numbers, we add them up. 23, so we have, well, first of all, we have two of, uh, Three uh, values that are 22, so 22 plus 22 plus 22. You can just read it right off the chart. Then we have another one at 23. Then we have another one here at 29. Then we have another one here at 32. All right, and when we add all those together, uh, 22, 22, 23, and then 29, and then 32, we add those all together, we get 150. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So then if we say 150, divide by six, what do you get? 25. So what we figured out is the mean is 25. All right, mean is 25. So let's put that on the chart. It is right here. So we'll put, I guess we can put a little dot here if you want. Here we can say the mean is exactly equal to 25. Okay, let's take a look at the median. Median, I have to arrange from least to greatest, and I've already done it here, so let me just put 22, 22, 22, 23, 29, and then 32. I have one, two, three, four, five, six data points. So actually, I don't have a single center value. Here is the middle. There's three on the left and three on the right. Here's the middle. So instead of picking a one in the middle, I have to pick the two in the middle, and I have to average those. So 22 plus 23 is what, 45, right? And then 45, you divide that by two, 45 divided by two, you get 22.5, right? So the median is 22.5. Now before we write down the mode, or before we put it on the chart here, let's go calculate the mode real quick. The mode is just what occurs most often. I have three values at the number 22, I have a 23, 29, 32, so really the one that occurs most often is 22. So the mode is 22. All right, so here the mode is 22, so we'll put a little arrow here. Here's the mode, and the median is 22.5. Here's 22, here's 23, so 22.5 is right here. I'll put a little arrow here. At 22.5, this is the median. Now let's make sure and see, it did this uh, prediction that we have, uh, did, did, that come to, did, did it come to pass? We said that most of the data of the number of players on the team were down here, but these could almost be considered outliers. I mean, maybe they are, maybe they aren't, but they're very far away. And see what happens? When we average them in mathematically, the mean is pulled. The median is way down here, but the mean is pulled this way. So if I ask you, what is the average number of teams in, you know, in a region, and you tell me the mean is 25, then I'm gonna think, okay, most teams on average will actually have 25 players. Some will be higher, some will be lower, but the average will be around 25. But the reality is that there's really only two teams that are way higher. Most of the teams are way down here. So this number is calculated and it is calculated correctly, but it doesn't really convey what you're trying to say. Most of the teams are actually down here and the median is a better measure of that. 22 and a half, that is the median down here. This is a better accurate representation of actually how many players are on teams down here. And the mode as well, you could use the mode as well. The mode and the median uh, agree, but you can tell that the mean is being pulled to the right because of these outliers because it is so different than these here. So. In this lesson, I have tried to convey lots of things and we had to just kind of plow into it because if you try to do it too slowly, then it doesn't sink in. We tried to convey the idea that when you have lots of numbers, we really wanna measure the center value of those numbers. So I can walk into a meeting and say, okay, in this region, the average length of a candy bar coming out of our factory is 
10 centimeters. And you know that some will be less than 10 centimeters and some will be higher than 10 centimeters, but the 10 centimeters tells you on average what you expect coming out of that factory line. Boiling it down to one number is really important, but there are different flavors of doing that. The mean, or also called the average, just mathematically adds them all up, divides by the number of points, and mathematically incorporates all the data points. The problem with that is if you have outliers, then your mean gets pulled far away from the bulk of your data, and then it doesn't have a lot of value like it does in, like we saw in this problem. In those cases, we turn to something called the median. We just list the numbers from smallest to biggest and pick the one in the middle, and if we don't have one in the middle, we average the two in the middle, and then that is a, a, a better situation if you have outliers because the outliers, which are at the end here, are kind of discarded and we still picked something close to the bulk of the data. And then we of course had the mode, which is just uh, which one occurs most frequently. In this case, the median and the mode agreed very well. And also the mode is used if you have non-numerical data like eye color. What's your favorite food? What's your favorite dessert? What's your favorite uh, candidate for president or whatever when there's non-numerical data? Now that was all under the umbrella of trying to figure out a center value, a measure of center of the data. Equally important is something we'll learn later, how spread out is the data. You can just tell that this data is spread out pretty far. You can tell that this data is spread out pretty far. But what if I have lots more data points and the data was very clustered, tons of clustering in one area, then you are measuring and you want to know, and we'll learn later, how tightly clustered the data is around the mean. Like when you're averaging cl uh, uh, class grades, if the average is a 92, did all the students get A's and high B's or did we have some hundreds and some 70's? And so that is called measure uh, of how spread your data is. So how center, what, what's the center of the data? How spread out the data? Those are the main things we learn in statistics. Here we covered the mean, the median, the mode. I'd like you to practice these. Let's go on to part two. We'll get more practice with this and then after that, we will talk about how to measure the spread of a data set.